dude, you don't ever want to do meth in jail. Let me just tell you this right now, because you can't got nothing you can do. So I did this shit at like nine o'clock at night. Didn't sleep all night. Kept thinking the guards knew I had it. Were I'm gonna come search the cell. I was freaking out all night. Then I start having these fucking like hallucinations that people on the outside are getting in car wrecks and are like dying. Call home, talk to my mom. She's saying all this shit in my head. I'm hearing all this other. Shit. Dude, I freaked out so bad. The guards took me down. And medical put me in a turtle suit for in 72 hours strapped me down and i lost my mind for three days didn't sleep away i lost my mind i thought i was never coming back when i came back they were like holy dude we thought we were gonna have to take you to the psych ward dude <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be real with you bro i'm still not in control in control like i still in some days i still have cravings chris admits openly that he still struggles drug of choice fentanyl when a newborn baby and burnt bridges have opened his eyes to a better future. Today he tells us what he learned from jail and his experiences with addiction. I hope you enjoy this entertaining and honest episode of Chopping It Up. Chris. What's up, Jamie? My man, I appreciate you coming in, bro. This is the first one I've done at nighttime, so it's like dark outside. There shouldn't be no noise. This is going to be cool. I appreciate you coming. Yes, sir. You appreciate look good. Last in. time I seen you, we was in jail together, and you didn't look real good. No, I was looking rough. I remember I just got there. I was, I think, going through DTs pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't looking very good. I think mm -hmm. I got out quickly after I seen you, though. So you've been clean like two months. Yeah. From all fentanyl, all opiates, all that bullshit. Yeah, all that nasty shit. That How's that feel? It feels amazing. I mean, going to the gym again. Okay. So, you know, just uh, feeling, you know, more clarity. Yes. And the more time you spend away from it, the better your brain feels, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to take a long time before I'm even out the hole because it took a long time to get as bad as I got. Right. You know, it don't happen overnight, but Drug every of choice. Day. What is your drug of choice? Fentanyl. fentanyl. For sure, fentanyl. I wanted so fentanyl every time. No matter what, even if somebody could offer you real heroin or, or oxys or roxys, you'd rather have fentanyl. Well, the problem is you can't find real heroin around here no more. Right. I mean, if someone were to offer that to me, I might have done it. But at the end of the day, the fentanyl is 100 times stronger. And it, well, once you do it, that's that's nothing's going to be beat it. Nothing, I mean, nothing gets you to that same point. You've never done? You, you've never? I've done fentanyl, yeah. It was never my thing, though. I always liked pills because pills, I knew what it was. Right. I knew what if, if it was a milligram, it came from a pharmacy, I knew exactly what it was going to do to me. Well, because when you got out of it all, that was probably right before the fentanyl epidemic really, really hit yes. with the pressed perks and pressed pills. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah, because I never had no problems buying any of that shit when I was doing all that shit. Right. That's um, what really got me. Was but I did, like I did OD on, uh, on uh, fentanyl. Uh, I think it's been three or four years ago now. Got all Xanaxed up. We went up to Baltimore. I got like 10 caps. I, I snorted one, and I really didn't even give a fuck. I shot the other, ended up in the hospital, probation violation. That's probably where I seen you in jail. Damn. It's probably for that. That was what, in 2020? Yes. Holy was that the time? Shit, that was 2020 because it was right when COVID hit, and my third day in there was the day nobody had toilet paper. Oh, my God. That had to suck, dude. Yeah, I bet dude. you whoever had a role made money. Yeah, yeah. And you, I was tripping, like, what's going on out there in the world, bro, that people don't have toilet paper right now? You know, you're in jail. You know you don't get no information. And I'm in the first phase, so there's no TV or nothing. Well, that's when I went into during all the COVID shit. Yeah. I caught COVID three times in jail. No shit. Three times. What are they doing with you in there to prevent that or help that? Nothing. It was a shit show. They put me and everyone else had COVID in a quarantine pod, and they kept bringing people off the street that had COVID into the pod. So you would get off of like your 14 days, you would not have COVID, and they'd bring new people in, and you would catch it again. So everybody in there just spreading that shit all over. And the, the worst place. part is, you have court. It gets postponed. So I had to like stay. I did four to three extra months on my bid because of COVID. Yeah, uh, so, uh, Brody was telling me the same thing that he couldn't get out on bond and he ended up sitting in six months because COVID. They was not doing any court. Yeah. And like every time such you a go scam for it, in the long run, though. Like, what the fuck well, really this happened there? Up. If someone in the pod was, had, was uh, you know, had it, tested huh? positive, the whole pod couldn't go to court. No shit. So when I went, when I actually left, it was a Friday morning. They had moved me over to the other building in the annex, and I had to go to court that Friday morning. So when they come out for court, they did that little thermometer on the forehead thing mm -hmm. and tested us out, and I tested over. He wasn't going to take me to court. I was like, bro, I'm going home today. Like, I got to go to court because they're taking me home, and it's Friday, dude. I'm like, I'm ready to go. Right, that's your last chance. And everybody chance. in the van was flipping out. He's like, no, I just let him go. Put him in the van. Fuck that. And he checked me again, and then he said it was okay. I got in the van. I got to come home. But yeah, that had to be a shit show. I wasn't there very long. I'm glad. Dude, I didn't. I'm glad. 
almost almost a whole year. Oh, man. Because I was out for two weeks, got locked back up. For another violation. Three, I was on, uh, th- I did three pr- uh, probation violations and brought back a new so charge. What, what, okay, so fentanyl, let's start right there. With fentanyl, was you eating it, snorting it, shooting it, all three? Never shot up. Okay. That's probably why I'm still alive. Right, okay. So I'd only smoke it, and then I'd snort it every now and then, but I loved smoking it on the floor. No though. shit, I've never, I've never, I've seen people do that, but I've well, never Well, you remember doing that. the Roxy's and stuff. See, I never did that either, and if what? I'm not mistaken, I think me and you tried to do it with a Delauded one time, and I just didn't like it. Right, I wasn't did. happy with it, yeah. The Delauded's don't do it as right, because you, because they got that coating and shit, can I, can I smart? Yeah, yeah, go for it. So, yeah, man, uh, definitely a horrible, horrible drug. So the first time you got locked up was what? Because I remember when we first hooked up. You you had you didn't have no charges, right? Because that was with uh, when Camo was with me still, right? So, because I took that charge for him. Okay, remember that was my first charge. So they gave me first offenders. That was because y'all had Coke, Coke, Xanax, and a weed in in the uh, what's it called? Echo Village, the one right next to the state police station. That little shithole that everybody deals in. in, Oh yeah, Yeah. and what we do? We smoked fucking weed in the smoke non smoking part of the hotel. Cops doing a foot patrol, smelled it. Knocked on the door. There's no peepholes there. What do I do? Open, Open the fucking door. door right up, and they came guns drawn. But I was a, uh, well, I was a 17. Right. <clears throat> no, sorry, sorry. I was 18. So that kind of fucked me. But right. I was 18, and they gave me first defenders on all three charges. Okay, so with the first offender status, that's uh, as long as you finish out your probation and shit, then you get no felony on your record, right? Right. So it was 100 hours community service, year of probation, and some some other fine. But okay. I had to do that times three. Oh, okay. You had to do it for each charge. Right. But they just made me do a year of probation. They didn't give me times three of that. So I had to do 300 hours community service. Okay. Fine times three probation. So I did all that. Got it all dropped. And the second I got it dropped, six months later, I get caught with fucking fentanyl. Damn. How much? I was getting high the whole time I was on first offenders, first off. Right. Well, first offenders don't piss you all the time either, do well, they? it's pre-trial. So you just fucking, they don't watch you. Right, they so, just send you yeah. in there, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so you're getting over on them fake piss. Every time. Yeah, I did that for years. Yeah, so so it called up with me. I got pulled over right there at the Kernstown exit on the bridge. They okay. found a cap of fentanyl with literally like half a cap in it and charged me like I had fucking 30 caps on me and I was the like biggest that, dealer in fucking It's like town. that shit's death, bro. It's, it's like that shit's death. As soon as they see it, they just see death. Well, uh, this was in 2019, too, so it really wasn't as bad, but they knew like it was, you know— yeah. They knew about it. But now, I mean, you get caught with that shit. They're smoking you. Yes, for sure. Smoking you. Uh, I can't. I talked to Wes earlier today, and he said something crazy about that, too. That somebody had just got charged and got like 20 years. Like, they gave her murder because you, well, you, she yeah, supplied. If you, if you sell something to someone and they die, or they sell to someone else and that person dies, you can catch a body. It's coming all the way back to you. It's like a RICO act or something. Exactly, dude. It's, it's, it's fucked up. And probation's a scam. It's a scam. I've, if any of you ever get off of probation, in my opinion, I would do the time. Because I did two years probation. took me five years to get off it, and I served more than two years of jail time. It's it's definitely a, a rotational money-making thing, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's all it is. They want to put you back in so they make more money. And then when you're in jail here, you're paying $1.50 a day just to be there. Dude. Everything costs 10 times what it does on the street on your commissary. They make a million dollars off of ramen noodles it's crazy, in a couple of months, I bet. How much is ramen noodle when you're in? It was 98 cents for a pack. And I guarantee dollar. it went up. They're, they're dollar, dollar ten at least, and you know you're paying 10 cents on the uh, Yeah, for the spicy. Right. You get the chicken flavor for like 98 and they, cents. And at the same time, too, does Walmart charge the same for everyone? I'm pretty sure you go in there Fuck and get dude. the same. For you a get dollar, a 10 pack you get a for 10 like pack. $7.99, yeah. No, yeah, for literally for like $2, you get like a 15, 10 pack right, of okay. noodles. So they're killing it. They're killing it. And same thing with the chips and shit, too, though, right? They're like a dollar a bag for shit you know you get for a quarter on the street. And they get it from a distributor. So it's you a, know they're getting fucking retail, yeah, like wholesale prices. Monetizing shit like that was the worst thing they could have done. Well, like when you monetize pe- keeping people in jail... That's just fucked up for everybody. Well, and the fucked up part is, dude, it's owned. All right. It's owned by or funded, whatever, by the lawyers and the fucking, uh, what is it? The prosecutors. The judges. The judges. That's right. The judges and prosecutors and all that shit. So they making money by sending you to jail. Right. It's fucked up. Right. Commonwealth is fucked right. up, Right. Like they're bro. getting a little piece of that dollar fifty you get in there every day. That and you're people are blind. It's like freedom isn't free. And right. there ain't no justice. It's blind. All right. So what's it like in there? I mean, Winchester Jail's sweet. Okay, compared okay. to what? 
compared to probably West Virginia. I mean, okay. just from what I, from from here, word of mouth. I haven't been to a lot of jails. No, though. and I mean, I'm, I'm proud of that. Right, but, right. Uh, Winchester Jail, it's not that bad. It's a bunch of fucking like, goofy people. As long as you have some common sense and you're a little respectful, you're gonna be all right. But, yeah, it's not a terrible, terrible jail. I can agree with that. No, I mean, I've been all over that jail. I mean, I've been in every part. I've been in the hole. I've been... Yeah, you know, how much time I'm doing the hole? Fuck, was it like... Oh, 10, 15 or 10 days. I mean, it felt like a month. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm telling you, that shit... That sucks. Where they put you at? N and W or Z or... And that a part of it or... Is it... Uh, X or X, it was X, it X, X yeah. or Z are next to each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. W and so whatever down there, I spent like nine months in W. No, no, sorry. I was up top. What's up top? So that used to be PC. So get this. Some that dude fell PC, down the right? steps. Oh, and God. And you know them steps the is like steps 40. fuck you up. Dude, they're like 40 steps. Old dude. Just tumbled fucking down them at like 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> Truck going to get meds or some shit. Going to bing, get back bing, to bing, the, bing. going to get took out of the hole. It was, in, it was sorry, yeah, it was in the night. They came to get him to bring him to, you know, back to phase one. Fucking fell down the fucking steps. Fucked him up. Fucked him up. So that was PC upstairs when I was in. <clears throat> but I was in the hole in like 98, 99. It was a long time ago. It um, hasn't changed, bro. They still take your mat, right? No, they didn't do none of that then. So back then, Dude. you could have your radio. You could have your food. They didn't take your mat. You flushed your own toilet. No, now it's changed. They take oh, your mat at 8 a.m. You don't get it back till 8 p.m., but usually you don't get it till 10 because it's after meds. And you know fucking meds. Always bullshit. And, um... You can't flush your own toilet. You get out an hour a fucking day. I mean, it's bullshit, dude. It sucked. Hardcore whole time right there, ain't it? Yeah. No mat in there, bro. That's horrible. Mm. Like, at least I got to lay on my fucking mat and read books. I asked for a Bible because that's what I use for a pillow. And I took my, I took my, uh, what's it, your white sheet? I put it in my jumpsuit, tied it around me, put my jumpsuit over it. So I would always keep my fucking sheet to use. Right. At least has something to fucking cover mm. up. I was in the hole for cheek and meds. Okay, what kind of meds? Fucking boost bars. <laughs> Getting a honey bun a fucking night. <coughs> <coughs> fucking crazy. <coughs> honey bun a night, man. <coughs> yeah, man. Uh, the Seroquel was a big thing when I was in. That shit makes my legs jump. Hey, everybody like loved that shit. Mother. I know, yeah, you was getting probably all that shit. No, I didn't fuck with none of it for real. It was fragile, I, I mean, I, I de- well, yeah, that's, yeah, he did for sure. Um, I did a couple of Seroquel, but I got to the point where I was like, dude, this is, like, I can't sleep if I don't have it. And and then I was giving away food for it. I would wake up in the middle of the night and just smash my whole box because it gave me the munchies. Dude. Yeah, that shit's bad. That shit's not good for you either. Nah. Fucking, uh. So what'd you do the whole time you were locked up? Like, what'd you do? Play games? You play basketball, spades, poker? Basketball, spades, uh, you know, hearts. Kind of just, I mean, I read a lot of books. It was crazy because yeah. I never really read a book till I went to fucking jail. But, um. It's the only escape you got. When I, a funny story, when I went to phase one the last time, I was only in jail for two weeks, and they just changed probation. So it was my second violation. I go in there thinking I'm going to go do a year. Okay. Because I just did six months on my first. So I go in there, and um, I see um, Eric, and he's like, bro, they just changed the probation laws. You're only going to be in here for 14 days is the max they can hold you on a second violation. No shit. Yeah, so they changed probation laws in Virginia. First day is a slap. First, first violation, slap on the wrist. Second only jailable up to 14 days and then third they can give you anything they want hmm so anything that's inside of your sentence inside of your guidelines right right i think that's true too because uh when i went in i hadn't violated probation my whole time 17 years since i violated mm-hmm. any kind of probation and then that was uh my first violation that i did when i seen y'all in there in covid times but i still sat in there two weeks Right, so that's the most they can the hold COVID you. And shit. Yeah, Two. well, that's what I found out. So they set my court date for like three months later, and I was like, oh, fuck, man. I guess I need to lay it on down, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to court for three months. And then my lawyer was on top of it. Somehow they gave me a good lawyer that wasn't some fucking douchebag. He was like a pro bono real lawyer mm-hmm. that worked for David Hensley, matter of fact. Oh, dude. Yeah, he had me right out, bro. He was on the phone with me the same day. He's like, I'm going to get you out Friday. I'm going to get you out Friday. So, yeah, so Eric's like, dude, you're getting out. Just fucking, just just do this phase one shit. You're good. So I'm over here thinking like, fuck it. This dude is in the pod. He had fucking ice on him. Mm. And he he's going down for a while. And he was just, he fucked with me. He's like, yo, you want to get high? I was like, you got this shit on you? He's like, yeah. Gives me a fucking rock like that. I ain't never snorted fucking ice. Mm-hmm. Only smoked it. And it was never, I guess, good shit. Dude, you don't ever want to do meth in jail. Let me just tell you this right not. now. Because you can't got nothing to fucking do. And you can't go to sleep. And you're in phase one. So you're locked in your fucking cell the whole time. So I did this shit at like nine o'clock at night. Man. 
didn't sleep all night. Kept thinking the guards knew I had it. We're fucking going to come search the cell. I was freaking out all night. Then I start having these fucking like hallucinations that people on the outside are getting in car wrecks and are like dying. So I'm freaking out. The guards see I'm freaking out. They let me use the phone like when I wasn't even allowed to use the phone to call home. Call home, talk to my mom. She's saying all this shit, but in my head, I'm hearing all this other shit. Dude, I freaked out so bad. The guards took me down to fucking medical, put me in a turtle suit for no fucking way. 72 hours. No way. Strapped you into the chair? Strapped me down, and I lost my mind for three days. Just Didn't sleep a week. Fucked up on meth. Fucked up. Man, they was like waiting. To, the next shift was waiting to come in to see if Chris was still awake or not. Dude, it for was For three nuts. days. It was nuts, bro. I mean, Man, it, I would it have never thought of that. So that's the first bro. time you ever did meth, though. So you had no idea what it was gonna do, like, even though, even though you'd heard the stories. I mean, I've I'd done like coke and shit, right. and I'd done I'd done it once or twice, and it didn't fuck me up like that. I mean, this shit had me. I lost I lost my mind. I thought I was never coming back. I mean, the guards <laughs> when I came back, they were like, "Holy shit, dude! We thought we were gonna have to take you to the psych ward." Right? We thought you were gonna lose your mind, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy shit though. <clears throat> I remember one time going in and a dude had crack and I had just got kicked off work early. So I had two giant fucking bags of food, giant bags of food. And he had fucking, I don't know, however much crack. I tried to eat much. We was in there smoking crack. How'd down, you smoke down it? Classification. You had a uh, them roll up lids that you roll off the orange juice. We would roll that and make that into a bowl. I smoked uh, when I was in there the last time I was, I can say, nothing say whatever you want. Alle All right. So I, allegedly I was uh, helping move some chicken. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, some spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was chicken and then fatty. Yeah, so the chicken was the spice and had motherfuckers in there clucking out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. and this was a crazy batch. Had to spray it on the paper. Okay, so, so Eric was telling me about this. Dude, so I had some of that. And, um, I mean, I made some good money off it, but dude, that shit fucking was nuts. We would have to, to get it to spark. We would, you know, take a toilet paper roll, fucking put it up the top, and you'd have to run to an outlet. Yeah. Spark the outlet Get it and fucking catch a piece of paper on fire and you just start passing the paper under the fucking cells. And it's nuts what you fucking do <laughs> in jail. The crazy shit you come up with, ain't it? Just watching people get zapped out of a, like a socket while they're trying to light it. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah, yeah because then that's a strong break. It's rubbing Ben Gay on the walls after you hit it so you don't smell the smoke. Uh, yeah, yeah. Burn some popcorn. Or something like that. There's yeah. always some dumb shit going on like that, especially fucking when you got cigarettes up. or something. So Frankel said they ended up eating it. On the yeah, paper. Yeah, dude, that's what I was doing. I said, I was fuck eating. you right up. It fucked me up. I watched a dude Kirk out and work release on that shit. Lost his mind. Like, demons was coming to get him. He was fucking frightened for his life. I mean, I Literally it, frightened for his fucking life, bro. That's the, uh, where the hell did that J go? I don't know. I got one over here, too. To my ear. You find it? Yeah. Burn that one up, man. I want to taste what you got going on there. So um, obviously purple, you're not a purist. You don't believe in everything. You you got a weed license or whatever for paper. Oh yeah, I'm Cali so, sober. That's right. That's what's up. That's how I feel too, man. Uh, like, what's the point of not being able to smoke a little weed? It's totally natural. It ain't never made me sell nothing for for you know what I mean or do nothing crazy. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, usually, it keeps me usually so high that I don't want to do none of that crazy shit. That's the shit. best thing about it, too. I, I realized that when I was still in my Roxy stage and all that shit that sometimes I would get a craving. And if I could just smoke a bowl, I'd forget about it. Yeah, because you didn't smoke back when I first started coming to Nah, you. man, probably not because I did so many pills. Dude, what happened with that? You had a you had a little, little something going on. Like, what, did you just get a pill count and fucked up? What do you mean? With the pills? Yeah, I mean, like did, did you just you just gave it up, right? I mean, uh, doctor cut me off because of pill count or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, because uh, I had Xanaxes in my system, I wasn't supposed to have no Xanaxes at all. And when she found it, she mm. said the cutoff is fifty, and you're at four fifty. She's like milligrams. I yeah, whatever it was. She's like when they measure it. Mm -hmm. She said the measurement should be fifty. You should never go above fifty. She was, she was at four fifty, and you don't even have a prescription for these meds. <laughs> So she was like, that's all I can do for you, Jamie. I can't give you no more. I was like, man, you got to give me at least one more script so that I can get well. You know what I mean? Give me a chance to get my life back together. Mm -hmm. She cut me off. She gave me 184s, 184 milligram Dilaudids. I shot all of them in 44 hours. Every fucking one in 44 hours. That's mm -hmm. hard to believe, man, but that's the fucking truth, bro, because I was banging them bitches like they was nothing. Dude, it's, it's not hard to believe. But yeah, that was the end of the Dilaudids for me, man. And then uh, I, I stayed on the methadone for a while. I cut down from 10 milligrams a day down to where I was like at two and a half milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go into jail 
uh, for that Coles charge, for a theft charge. I had to go in and do 90 days, and then I had to do nine months on, on home monitoring. Mm. So that's when I got completely off methadone and everything, bro. I ain't fucking looked back since. Fuck that shit. I don't want no parts of none of that. E- even the same, this, I mean, the Suboxone and stuff, it can work for some people. I know methadone works for some people too, but for me, it's not, it's just not good. So see, I'm on the Suboxone now. Right, okay. The methadone so, I tried, and it it I, it fucked me up because I was still getting high with it. Okay. So that It was really giving you too much. Up. So how much Suboxone are you doing a day? Two eight milligrams. Okay, it takes that much? I mean, no, if I, if I miss, I, I really only need one. Right. But the other one at night takes the edge off. So what, you, you don't feel like you get high from that? You feel like that's just a deterrent no. at this point? I, de- I feel nothing off of them. For some reason, I'm not one of those people that just, I don't feel nothing off of it. I just feel normal. Right. You know, and if I miss taking it, I'll realize I get a little clammy, a little sweaty, a little irritable. Right. But it's nothing compared to dope sickness. Right. And it's so. nothing compared to destroying your life over something that's harder to get. Right. When you have, a, that, I feel like it's totally cool to take the methadone or the box and it just doesn't work for me because it's a it's a substitute for the chase and the chaos. Well, you can't say it doesn't work for you because it did work for you to get you in the situation you are now. You did use it. It's, I did, man, but it was fucking horrible in the end to come off of it. It was no different coming off five years worth of methadone than it was coming off of Oxy's. And that's the t- catch on it. Like, it, it, it's diff- it helps you, but it's the same shit to come off of. It's just sometimes the methadone is worse than coming off of a fucking horrible. fentanyl. Bro, that shit's it's like coming worse. out of your bone marrow for six months, dog. It's fucking bad. Well, when I went to jail that the, the third time, fourth time, um... I was doing methadone. I, had a, I was doing 120 milligrams a God, day. God, you felt terrible then. And dope every day. Yeah. So I was up for two weeks straight, didn't sleep once. Yeah, sick, sick as fuck. That's how I was not work release too when I first when I first did it. Uh, I couldn't sleep. Them boys would be up listening to radios and shit two or three in the morning because we was in work release. We could move around the block and all night long. They never locked us down, never even turned the fucking TVs mm-hmm. off. So, yeah, I'd be sitting up feeling rough. But I was so glad to be over that shit. Just, Dude, you're just too to tall. Have it out of my life. Your fucking feet probably hang a foot off that fucking bunk. They do. They always have. Every bunk I ever That's sleep it. in, my feet hang off the edge. <clears throat> yeah, those places are not built for me. When I was in front row, they got the moving bars, mm-hmm. and my feet would go out the bars. And in the mornings, when they racked the cells, I had to pull them in, or them cells would break my fucking ankles. They're that small down. No, was it RSW? Little. That's the old joint. No, that's the old joint that's down there by the court. Yeah, we're connected right to it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been yeah, there. That's old school. No fun at all. So, yeah, weed keeps you from fucking using, man. I think that's a good thing, especially if it's, uh, you know, good weed, because I like good weed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't like smoking that old bullshit. Fuck no, I did too many years of that shit. So, what, you got a clinic or a doctor that you get you, your Suboxone? Is there a clinic you go to? Yeah. Or you got a doctor? Okay. It's um right there on Martinsburg Pike 11, uh, right or the fucking... Denny's is. Okay. So, right behind the about. sheets. Bro- about. They got field. a methadone clinic in there, too, don't they? And then methadone and suboxone, or is no, it just one or the other? Suboxone. Okay, because there's a methadone <clears throat> clinic up there on the hill somewhere that my buddy goes to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to Crossroads. Okay. But yeah, man, I, th- I think that stuff right there keeping you off of it is definitely uh, a tool to be able to use. Because like say, if you if the choice comes between the fentanyl or the suboxone that you're on every day, obviously you're killing it on suboxone. You're working, right? Mm-hmm. You got a job. Well, the way I what look do you at do? it is— What do you do for work? Uh, I do a heat and air conditioning still. Yeah, you know, okay. I'm working with a really sweet company. Uh, they're uh, Loudoun County's number one HVAC company, and you know Loudoun County's like the richest. And when you started doing that, you didn't know nothing, right? Didn't they mm-hmm. teach you everything? And no, I started with my dad okay. when I was like 14. Right. He taught me really everything. So okay. I've been doing this is. for a minute. But uh, yeah, I've learned a lot with them. But yeah, they're a good company. They're they're it's really rich people I work for. Okay, really fucking real real change. I used to do commercial stuff in DC. Now it's all residential, rich people. So some of them people are hard to deal with though, ain't they? Dude, very hard. Huh? They don't know. <clears> they don't very know. hard to deal with. Wait. They've never been through no trauma. They don't know nothing. They look at me and I'm they're like, Do I want this dude in my house? Right. <laughs> yeah, they see tattoos and shit. Yeah. Yeah, they judge you immediately. Immediately. I mean, I feel like that with a lot of just in a lot of things nowadays. That's why I'm happy I do HVAC because the felonies keep me from a lot of shit. Right. I mean, you know. You know what though, man? I've just learned to lean into it, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I come over prison. I look like a prisoner. I look like a convict. I act like a convict. And I didn't like it. I didn't want to go around people. I was embarrassed and shamed. 
That's fuck not the it. Way. Fuck we'll do a it. podcast about it and tell the fucking world. That's right. That's where I'm at with Dude, it. Dude, I walk into people's face, give them the biggest smile, and I make them fucking love me by the end time they're done talking to me. They love me. So, and then find and out they feel my past. dumb for judging me. Then find out about my past. Right. After you realize how good of a dude I am and yeah. how much you like hanging out, then then ask me about my past. And then you'll be like, damn, I didn't know that. I would have never thought that. Exactly, dude. And that's the thing. Oh, shit. You can't, like, fucking let a statistic rule your fucking life. Nah. That's what's wrong with America. Yeah, for sure, man. So you're off paper now. Finally. July of last year. I got off May? I got off May last year. So right before you. Dude, I got off by the skin of my teeth. I was getting high the whole last few months. So it wasn't probation that made you clean up? No. What made you clean up? What was that final decision? Losing my family. Yeah, okay. So, you know, like my son was born and I was still getting high. I mean, from the day he was conceived till two months, it let two and a half months in. And it really just was like, one day I was just woke up and I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I got a son now. I got a beautiful girl, a beautiful baby mother, a mother of my child. She has a daughter that looks at me like a fucking dad. And I was like, I gotta get my shit together. It's right. not just me anymore. I can't keep being selfish. Like, I got family you know that's not easy to do bro mm. that's not easy to do i give you credit for that i wasn't able to do that when i was a kid um you got to stay that path too though man don't let don't let some of the old motherfuckers that used to help you live that life come back around and, and pull you down don't let them drag you down you know what i mean mm -hmm. people places and things dude yeah facts that's like really... the more knowledge you have on this type of shit the better you are off at it um but that's one reason i like having you younger cats in too i have brody in and uh, he just turned off all social media, run his own business, things like that, because he's making changes like that out of his own head. Mm -hmm. Nobody forced him to do it. It's I think awesome. that's good. I was never able to do that shit. Like, I was like, I could see it. I knew there was a problem. I knew it was an issue, but I just kept fucking crashing, kept spamming, you know, slamming my head into the wall, man. That's the biggest problem is admitting, bro. Like, I'll fucking, until it gets to the rock bottom, dude, I'll fucking deny, deny, deny. And you just got to take accountability. You know, you got yourself there. You got to fucking get yourself out. You got to worry about you. Yeah. You got to get you right before you can help anybody else. Exactly. I didn't love myself, man. Okay. I had to start fucking loving myself so I could fucking love the people that care for me. You know what I mean? Right. It's bad. But yeah, it's just now that I'm, I'm just now starting to get back around my family and be able to see my son. They're just trusting you. Yeah, just now. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wasn't a deadbeat. I still, like, was paying bills and shit and helping out, but it's like, I just was not there. Absent. Absent, bro. Yeah. I'm going to duck this. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> but you know what? It's I can't fix the past. I can just, you know, change the future Absolutely. and live in the present. That's I'm going to make every is, day bro. better and make up for it. And, and uh, being 20 years older than you, you're, you're, you're saving yourself so much heartache mm -hmm. and and regret from not being there for your kids you know what i'm saying like i was in prison my daughter was six months old i went to prison i came home she's like seven Corey was like five i come home he's like 11 mm -hmm. yeah Bro, i missed a big fucking chunk and then i stepped kept fucking up you know what I'm saying and still acted like a dumbass because i let other people influence me right i was still i was still influential uh in, by other people like, I got this girl in my life, she drank and all that shit, and I went right back down that road again. I let myself do that. Anymore, I stand on my own ground and do what I'm going to do. You can sit over there and do whatever the fuck you want. Exactly. You know what I mean? But you got to be in control of you. It took me a long fucking time to learn how to do that, so I respect that coming from your younger age. You know what I'm saying? That's hard to do, man. I got to give you credit for that. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I'm going to be real with you, bro. I'm still not in control. In control. Like, I right. still fucking, some days I still have cravings. I still... Fuck up too, but you know I'm just learning. You gotta take accountability, and what I've been told, like I've been to rehab twice, you know, jail. You gotta play the tape through. Yeah, you know, you know the tape. You know the tape. Yeah. And you gotta play it through because you know how it ends every time. You might start out getting high, you might start out drinking, or you might start going out with these friends, but it all leads to the same ending. Yeah, and if you know, you know that, if you know it's the same path that leads to the same place, why well, keep going down it, right? It's insane. You know what I mean? I can smoke weed. I can drink a few beers. I don't have a problem with those things to, like you said, mm -hmm. selling my equipment, destroying my life, fucking up my family. And it happens like that, dude. It it's doesn't not... take long, does it? No. Fuck no, dude. My last relapse, I lost a lot of shit in just four months. Right. 
selling shit, you mean? Or like I mean, burning I sold bridges? a lot of shit, burned a lot of bridges, and just fucked up a lot of money. Yeah. Money's right. easy to get. Money comes and money goes, though, man. As much as I have money as I've spent on dope and all that shit, the family thing's what hits me the hardest. Yeah, you know I mean? Fuck, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, money ain't nothing mean nothing right. to me. We can make more money. I'm not, I'm fine with just being comfortable, but I just I just want to be with my family now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got to. I want my kids to live a better life than I've ever. Than yeah, there's, I did. there's a lot of value in uh, having people to come around, friends or family, but a family group. If you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, people you can depend on, man. Well, if I can tell you they're gonna do something, they really do it. Yeah, that's hard to find too, especially in the people that we ran around with. Because you run around with motherfuckers that are using all the time. Nine times out of ten, they're scumbags. All the time, stealing shit, always fucking. You know what I'm saying? Always got something to sell. Yeah. Yep. Always fucking got. Always got some hustle. Always want fronts. Always hustle. Just some something. dumb shit. Right. Or swearing to God on their kids. That was the worst thing for me coming up. Was the, I had a buddy and it was everything. Like, I swear to God on my kids, bro. I'm going to take care of you. I swear to God. Bro, your kids are dead as fuck because you don't swear on them kids a hundred times and lied at this point. See, now that's, yeah. Over I'm not and a fan over that, and over but... again. I just found out the other day he's fucking doing meth up in West Virginia somewhere. Fucked up as all Fuck, get out. Dude. My homeboy. My stick man from when we was kids. That's nuts, dude. Yeah, same thing, man. 40 some odd years old. Uh, so, yeah, man. I, to seeing you realize and think of the things like that, I think it's really good to to go through that. Yeah, dude. And the thing about the meth is, dude, too, like, dude, what's the withdrawal like come down off that? Do you know? You've never no done clue. it? No clue. You've never done mm -hmm. it? That's good. I wonder, because do people act like that shit's like dope too? They, yeah, that's it's like everyone's on fentanyl or meth. That's all anyone's ever doing around Especially here. Especially around here, yeah, it's pretty bad, dude. And then I see where these people <clears throat> are on trank and shit like that uh, up in Kensington and certain places. It's crazy because uh -huh. it's like almost state by state by area. There's different drugs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They go around this corner and it's fentanyl and tranquilizer mix, and they go around here and it's coke and trank whatever. But it, it, like these streets and these cities are down like Baltimore crazy. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. well, the, some of the videos that I watch, some of the people that I followed, you know, they, they go to these places and videotape these crazy scenes. Well, uh, I've and, been down there, bro. And they got people that can take them around and, you know, yeah. That's never my scene, man. I'm not I'm not trying to be around any of that shit. Yeah, no. It ain't, it ain't nothing. You said something about seeing people get shot. What mm -hmm. happened down in D.C.? How'd that work out? Uh, it was pretty crazy. <clears throat> I was just working at the construction site, and this this little kid, this, like had to be fourteen year old kid, walked up to this dude who was like thirty years old, emptied a whole clip on him, like five feet away from me. Just broad daylight, bad. seven shots. Yes, crazy. Dude was dead before he hit the floor, and then just a puddle of blood just comes. Like you know, on GTA when you get wasted, bro. That's exactly what that shit was like. I was like, holy fuck. No shit. Yeah, bro. That kid is what takes off running. Took off running. I'm pretty sure he got away. Threw the gun in the sewer. Just took off getting it. Gone. Yeah, bro. Crazy right in front of your face. And yeah, that's bro. not far from here, man. I mean, we don't see a whole lot of that shit around here, but we're mm -hmm. not far from that craziness. You know, you remember my sister, right? Uh, yes. She uh, she just got to the feds. She's She's been down, remember, like eight, eight years now. What was her name? Sabrina Hoffa. And her dad was, yes. So when I was in work release, I was in with her pops. Mm, yeah. You don't remember him? No. Didn't he get shot in the face? No. Okay, different person. No, but I, I thought she knew her. Maybe Hoffa. not. Hoffa. I swear the last Sabrina, name was Hoffa. Well, Sabrina King, but Sabrina Hoffa's uh Okay, but right. Ivan. Ivan Hoffa was that, that his name? That was her dad. That, yeah, that's her, that's her husband. That was her husband. He got shot in the face on New Year's. That's my niece's uh, dad. Right. Yeah, bro. Okay, so the niece is the one that I tattooed on. Yeah, And then bro. your sister's the one that was married to Ivan. N yes. She's... And Ivan's the one that got shot in the face. You've never met her because she's been locked up ever since time. I've known you. She's been locked up eight years, got six left. Okay. Yeah, isn't that crazy, never bro? never knew that. Yeah, Ivan got fucking shot in the face. Yeah, some chick shot him right in the face and just blowed his brains yeah, he's out. He's crazy as shit, bro. That was, like right, after, that was like right after he got, right after we got out of jail because I was in jail with him he was trying to get jobs and all this shit dude he was an absolute he's a fucking piece of yeah, shit yeah he was a crazy dude he was wild in the head for sure yeah well that's that's wild yeah man small world mm-hmm yeah that's crazy shit what you go to Fed for uh just just fucking I guess a like conspiracy yeah that's but all it takes came down the line boom gave her tried to give her 25 to life gave her uh 20 years but I guess parole so she gets like 11 12 years she can parole 
Damn. I guess no, it was like 25 life, but she gets parole in half of it, so 15 years. Damn. Yeah, dude, it's fucked up. And she might not even get that. Yeah, man, that motherfucker Fez Down ain't in Florida. no joke. Fez ain't no joke. I'm trying to think where she was at, though, but Tallahassee or something? Is, is that? Could be, man. I don't know what they have mm-hmm. for uh, prisons down in Florida. Yeah, that's some crazy shit, too. Yeah, I couldn't believe that when I heard it, I haven't got shot in the face, but I wasn't surprised. And like uh-huh. you said, I, I just, for some reason, I wasn't surprised to hear that. Nah, dude, he's a piece of shit. I never liked him. He got like eight kids he don't take care of, never paid child support. Just a piece of shit. Yeah, hopefully the state's taking care of him or something now. I mean, Jesus. Well, yeah, they were till, you know, they, till they turned like 18, 21. Right. They took care of him for a while. They definitely got looked out. They're doing good. Maddie's uh, just got out of rehab. Okay. So she got, you know, trying to turn her life around. She's going to Virginia Beach. Okay. That's the one you tattooed, and then you tattooed uh, Lexi twice. Okay. I think, yeah. Yeah, I had Lexi hit me up, uh, I don't know, about a year ago, I guess. Well, Asked her to touch time. something up or do something, and then she couldn't, somebody wouldn't let her come. Oh, shit, I don't or know. Or something, yeah, I can't remember how that went down either. You're still tattooing, right? I am, man, yeah. I was going to say, she hit me up. Yeah, I've come a long way from where we was when we did a lot of stuff, especially your hand right there. That's, we need to fix it up, bro. We need to get, we need get this shit I done. I felt like you kept that in your pocket a whole lot once we did it. I got arrested, bro. That's what it was. And the you had, handcuffs. You had it in your pocket because I seen it and you kept on pulling shit off of it. It had like yeah. marks and scabs and shit on it. Yeah. yeah I Between the both of us, it turns out rough. Yeah. yeah. Hands are a bitch. They are. But yeah. yeah, we could touch that up or fix it somehow, man. Definitely get you back in for that. I'm you should have down. a good little tax return coming too, right? Yeah, bro. I made good money too. That's what's so, up. You know what I mean? I See, I've been fucked up, bro. January and December's fucked up for me. You know, Christmas, everybody spends their money, and then everybody's waiting on taxes. That's true. And That's why I've been doing all this. Nah, this is all I do is tattoo, man. Okay. Well, you make, you make Yeah, I make enough to that. take care of myself. You know what I'm saying? I got enough put back that I'm not... Where Where'd you get this van? Where did you get this from? I uh, bought it from a buddy of mine. And uh, it's on wheels? Yeah. This is a whole camper on wheels. So all this right here had a bathroom and a refrigerator, and there was a stove and microwave and all that shit over here. I tore everything out and I did all this. Okay, you put you put this stuff up and mm-hmm. stuff. I put all the stuff. paneling up. I put the wainscoting up. I put the sound paneling there, and then I put a new floor down. Yeah, everything you see in this room, I've touched or done something to. This was brown, and I painted it. This is badass, dude. I fuck yeah, with it. Yeah, it turned out pretty cool, man. I want to be able to go around and talk to people without making them drive so far. Because mm-hmm. like I got I had to go to New York to do a podcast, for example. You took this four thing hour with drive. You? No, I just drove up there and did uh-huh. it in his studio and came back. But if I could drive right to you, Hell yeah. you know what I mean? It just makes it so much easier. So I figured out it work pretty good. So, yeah, man, anything else you want to say or do? Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Some yeah. some philosophy you want to drop on me? Some great story you can think about? Um, I mean, that depends on what story you kind of want. Right, I mean, right. What, what kind I mean, you got? Philosophies don't Tell do me fucking crazy drugs. shit that happened to you in jail. Uh, Tell me something crazy, some crazy celly. I know you had a crazy dude, celly or something. So this one dude, dude, he shoved, I mean, some crazy shit. This fucking dude shoved two bags of coffee up his ass before he went to the hole. No way. Yes fucking way. And you know the fucking bags of Maxwell yeah, House. Man. I mean, yeah. they're fucking, that's a big They're bag. huge, bro. To fit that in two rubber gloves. Two rubber gloves. And he put yes, it all he, up he in he there. he cut them in the fingers and he'd fill the fingers till they were fat and tie them off. Yeah. So that's like fucking, he did like, I'm telling you, bro, like three fingers. I mean, this fucking <laughs> shit. I didn't see him put it in there or anything, but right. he walked away with it. And he came out and he they didn't pick him up for hours. He hours. He was just chilling. He's fine, bro. I was like, this dude's fucking whack. That's crazy, ain't it, man? I that's never I never nuts. could get on how many people did that. You know, when you go to a hole and you see motherfuckers with shit and you're just like... Bro, how did you get that? Because you know when you they take you dig everything. They strip you down right. before you go in there and make okay. you... So, so you got nothing but clothes and nuts and, and butts, mat. and then you put them back on and you go back in the hole. So yeah, you know people who got shit in the hole. Where, where if they got anything, it's got poop smell on it. Fucking right. <laughs> when I see someone with a radio, I just start thinking, how the fuck no did you shit. get a radio in here? Yeah, I guess because they're like, you know, I mean, I mean, they're. I mean, they're, I mean, it's probably doable, but. It's fucking pretty big. I mean, radio. No, that, it's not doable. It's for not doable. No, I mean, I'm so I'm saying, but I mean, no. I, I know people have done yeah, it. Yeah, I imagine they have. I mean, that's just yeah, nuts. man. That's not good. No, nah, but you know how jail is. It's so many crazy shit that you could just go on and talk about. I mean, so many fights to just have. I seen this old man throw fucking hot water in this dude's face. Oil and hot water. Because Call, he kept calling him a chomo and shit. I guess right because he probably was. But he boiled a fucking cup of hot water and just threw it in this dude's face. Fuck him up. 
Dude, it was pretty, it was nuts. Yeah. I was, and then I did my last stint. I did most of it in the drug pod. So it okay. was pretty laid back. It's there was some bad. shit that popped off, but I mean. For the most part, most everybody's part trying back. to complete it for a reason. Though. Right. <laughs> yeah, I did that program, a similar one to it, fucking 20 years ago. 99, it was one of the first times when it was still in the annex. It was only like 12 of us. Mm. We got called playing spades on Thanksgiving night. Old CO walked outside and looked in the window, was walking around looking in the windows because you could It's still the open pod, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's seen us playing spades. We all had to go to the hole. We went to the hole for 15 days, and then they let us back in the drug pod. It's the first time ever. You're lucky you went to, they didn't even let you back. They wouldn't do that now. They wouldn't, no way. Hell they they weren't no. supposed to do it then. But, uh, yeah, we were all good. We were all, you know what I'm saying? We were just playing dude, cards, the annex dude. Now, dude when I was in the annex, you could play cards all night. They didn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It was the most wildest pod. That's where I saw the most fights, the most I people bet. were making, the most drugs, tattoos, everything. Yeah, that's what I did. I did my last two days that I did recently. When we seen each other, I did two days over there, and I was like, "Fuck this!" Mm -hmm. But uh, the CEO of the classified me, he come up and asked me before he classified me too. He's like, "Folks, are you cool with going to the annex? Are you alright with being in an open dorm like that?" I was like, "Man, I'm getting out tomorrow, or I'd go to a cell, dude, because you can't sleep." Yeah, I was like, "If I wasn't going to, if I wasn't getting out tomorrow, and I, I'll, I'm happy to stay up all night tonight because I'm leaving." But if I wasn't for that, I'd say, "Yeah, I would get you to put me in a cell," but I'm cool with that. And then I go mm -hmm. over there, and who's my bunkie, Fravel? Oh man, dude, he's always in. Dude, I was in there three different times, and every time he was in there, he's been in there for the last couple of years, man. I'm trying to keep dude. him to stay out, bro. I'm trying to get him to realize it ain't worth it. It's just not worth it to keep See, him. See, I seen him dope. last time in a uh, fucking Lowe's. No, yeah, it was Lowe's or home, it was a Home Depot Lowe's. Probably. And he, he was like, man, I gotta go see my PO in a couple of days, and I was like, dude, how are you doing? He's like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fail. I'm like, dude, you know they're gonna lock you back up. He's like, I don't know, man. I'm like, dude. You know they're they're not you're gonna do some fucking time this time. You're lucky you even got out. You just did like a year just waiting, mm -hmm. even get out and do the rehab program, whatever you did. Yeah, it just did like yeah. 18 months. And then he got out and got cancer. Wait, so he, he just, just got through just chemo, bro. He Whoa. just got done chemo and radiation, did six weeks of that Fuck. shit. Now he's trying to bounce back from cancer. He's like 160 fucking pounds, soaking wet. Can what kind of cancer? Uh neck and throat. He had like ten shit. ten tumors in his neck. Dude, from from just 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 I don't know, man. Yeah. Cancer's cancer, you know. Who knows what it was from? Because he wasn't. Yeah, he was probably in the best shape of his life last time he got out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I try to keep him straight. We talk every day. You know what I mean? I'll get him back on soon because I want to have him talk about the cancer and all that kind of shit. Uh, and that's a funny dude, man. He's a mm -hmm. funny ass kid, man. I like he that looked, dude. He looked out for me a lot in jail. Yeah, and he's that type of motherfucker too. He looked he out is. for me. He dude. looked out for me on the, like he can have five bucks and he'll give me five and four. Because you know his box, like he's the yeah. dude, like store man. He's yeah. store man up in there. Yeah, that's for sure. So where can everybody find you, bro? Like Facebook? What do you do for uh, social media now? Do you fuck with any of that? Nah, dude. And honestly, like this is the first thing I've done really with it in a while. I mean, okay. I used to be big on social media, but I kind of took a step back when I was going through getting my shit straight. But, you know, now that I'm doing that. And at the same time, too, when you're all high out and fucking around, you're not sharing a bunch of shit then, was you? Was you sharing, like, fentanyl days? What do you mean, sh sharing? Oh, sharing, like, about my stories and Right, stuff. right, no, whatever you really was doing, now. right. When like, you're I don't really go to I... NA and stuff. Like, I don't really like doing all that, like, right. talk about Like, I'll write bullshit with you right. and talk about it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Do that. Yeah, I don't like going in there and being judged, either. I right. Like, as soon as I walk in, they're judging me. Yeah, it's not it's not a hundred percent my thing. I don't I'm not saying I don't believe in it. If whatever works. Dude, whatever helps whatever anybody. Works, I don't care what that's helps. That's the big you. message I want to get across today is just get sober because That's what it's all about. It fucks me up every time I go down that road. Right. And you know me. I mean, I'm I was a pretty I'm I still am smart and like I was you knew me before I got fucking was on the shit. Right. And you you even seen like how much I was never been to jail, none of that shit. I was just just started getting you, tattoos, smoking weed, yeah, just, just growing dabbling. up. He was just dabbling, bro. Yeah, bro. And then it fucking took a long time to get to be able to talk about it now and be like kind of to where I, where I don't see myself relapsing. You know what I mean? Right. But yes, you, got a, you got a goal in mind, and that goal is to stay clean, raise your kid, mm -hmm. be yeah, a good yeah. dad, be a good son, mm -hmm. be a good husband, boyfriend, whatever. Just get, yeah, just get back to my family. That's really yeah, man. Uh, I spent all day yesterday getting uh, cars with my daughter. How old is she? Twenty one. <clears throat> she's turned twenty one in December. Because Corey's is he married yet? Yeah, man. He's like twenty five and married. Yeah. So we went all over whatever. We spent the whole day together. And most time it'd be shit that I hate doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to shop for cars. I don't want to go from this place to that. But I'm with my daughter. 
I didn't give a fuck what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't care what yeah, we're doing. Yeah. We're spending time. We're happy. And she's yeah. happy at the end of the day because we got her car. That meant way more than any. What'd you, know you get saying? her? Uh, she got a Honda CRV. Oh, shit. She paid yeah, for it yeah, herself, bro. though, man. She had $10,000 cash. She went so would you just co her a little cash. bit or No, I didn't have to do what? shit. That's I just dumb. drove her down there so that she could drive it back and I could give some input on the car, let her know what I thought of it, to, you know, and make sure she didn't get fucked. Well, that's but good, yeah, dude. she brought a nice little blue Honda home, oh, man. She was cool with that. So that, that shit means a lot to me nowadays, whereas before it didn't, man. And I'm a, I guess I'm just a selfish piece of shit in that way, and I'm trying to change that about myself. Well, and I'm don't glad say to that, see some. Yeah, but it's the same. I know it. I know it's true it's because I was you selfish. realize what you took for granted. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it took having all that stuff taken from me to, to realize that. Right. And, and then even then I didn't learn, dude. I'm the, I'm the motherfucker that's got to touch the burner five times. You tell me it's hot, I'm still going to touch it. I'm an idiot like that. So well, I like it when I see younger cats like you getting it at an earlier age. Don't just talk okay. to talk, man. Walk that shit. Because I got a lot of people that tell me this, that, and the other, and then a week later they're relapsing on Xanax. And then they talk to talk for another three mm-hmm. months, and then they're relapsing again on Xanax or and fentanyl or whatever. You know, don't do not do that roller coaster thing. Stay focused, man. That's my biggest thing lately is just being real and, like, speaking – to just only yeah, standing on what I'm standing on business, standing on what I say. If right. I'm saying I'm, I'm trying to like be be a man of my word from now on. Integrity, son. Yes, sir. I got that shit tattooed on my chest for a reason. Because <clears throat> you know when you're in addiction, you lie like a motherfucker, yes. and you live a lie every day, every and it minute. just spirals out of control. Every minute's a lie. It's fucked up. Yeah, man. And you know it's a lie. You know it the whole time that you're doing it, man, and mm-hmm. you're just trying to get out. Uh. One thing I've been focusing on is how your dopamine works for your body, mm-hmm. you know, because obviously Coke sets off dopamine, heroin sets off dopamine, fentanyl sets off dopamine. There's ways to learn how to use that shit for motivation by cutting all the other things out of your life, really? for example, like TikToks and all the shit that stimulates. We're <laughs> overstimulated. Yep. We're designed to go hit a woman over the head and drag her by her fucking pigtail back to the cave and get dopamine hits from that. We're designed to build a, 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 a cave and get dopamine hits from that. We're monkeys. We're fucking savages, bro. This is what we're designed I mean, for. for. real, yeah. We're not designed for pornography, games, TikToks. We're overstimulated. So now you're on a stimulation level of seven and eight because of all that bullshit going on in your life. And when you go to work, you're still thinking about them things that stimulate you. So you're never getting no stimulation from the productive shit you do in your life. That's that's a, that's a that's a good way of looking at it. So knock that shit out of your life. Yeah, I've turned that shit off. I don't turn to YouTube on to watch and go down a four hour rabbit hole. I don't flip through my fucking screens on my phone. I'll turn everything off and sit there mm-hmm. in the dark, in the nothing, in the no sound, no nothing, because I won't sit there long before I'll think of something to do. I'll get up, I'll go build something, I'll go record something, I'll go. See, that's honestly, I, I got I got ADHD, so I'm always fucking moving. It's hard for me to even like. Sit down, sit down and watch shit. shit. But anyway, like, I don't, I've never been one to scroll or get on TikTok and do all that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in that shit. I believe in going outside, just doing something. But, you know, when you're getting high, you don't do that shit. Right. You just kind of fucking isolate. Yeah, for sure. That's what I do. When I disappear, but, man, that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> exactly. But now that I'm working out and shit and hanging out with friends again, dude. What gym are you going to? Uh, Warrior Fitness. Steven okay, City. you're right. I'm Steven City. Yeah. I go to One Life, man. I don't go okay. near as much as I want to. And I was getting back on it. I had like three days in a row, and then we got this snow, and I ain't been back. I, I didn't go. Lazy. For two days. I went four days straight and then stopped for two. We started doing ice baths last year, too. You ever did that? I seen you do that shit. That shit's fucking crazy. Amazing, bro. It makes you, it's for your muscles, such a love hate for your relationship. Muscles? Yeah, it's supposed to help your joints and your muscles and all that shit by healing, just like ice and anything else, I guess. How long do you stay in it? Three minutes. Fuck. Uh, and we we only started out at like 50 degrees, I think, 50 or 60 degrees, and it's mm. fucking tough. But it's a whole mindset be. thing, man. It makes you feel great throughout the day. When you get out of there, you feel awesome. It's supposed to be like a 200% dopamine increase over mm-hmm. a period of the day and then back up again. And you can tell you get a love-hate. You hate it, but you love the way it makes you feel. So when it's time to get in there, you're like, man, I fucking don't want to do this. But when you get out, you're, you feel like, dude, I'm glad I did that. I feel great now. And you do it every day. I don't do it anymore at all because I'm a fucking big fat <laughs> fucking sissy. But we did it for three days in a row and then it got cold. So when we was doing it, it was still pretty warm outside. Right. So getting out of it and then coming out to 60 or 80 degree weather is not so bad. But getting out of it and it's 20 fucking five, you're getting in the cold water that's only 30 or whatever. So, yeah, 
Yeah, like uh, I want to get into it more, man, and the, the the physical shit at the gym too. I need to start doing both of those things more often. You used to be fucking real. I'm not saying you're not. No, but I'm just saying. You, yeah, you, yeah. You used I used to be, to be pretty fucking, fucking big, man. And I could get back to that pretty quickly. I stay in the gym for two, three months. I look pretty good again. But I'm fucking 48 or something. I'm getting old, bro. I'm getting well, old. You don't fucking look like you're 48. You right. fucking cut that fucking beard. Ah, you don't like my big old beard, man. It's been there like you're five years Viking now. You're fucking Viking ass. Like I'm Viking holding beard. on to that shit. Holding on to that shit. Well, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you coming, bro. Uh, when I put all this up and everything, you can check it out. Figure out if you want to come back again. All right, hell yeah. You already know. We have some subjects or something to talk about. I definitely need some tattoos. To fucking, we can do a live stream. Yeah, we can definitely get together, do some tattoos though for sure. Just hit me up. Let me know. All right, bro. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. That's what's up. Don't forget to like and subscribe, man. Chris, come in and kept it real with y'all, man. You got to appreciate that, man. That's all we're trying to do is let y'all know what it's like to live that life because it fucking sucks. And if you can relate to that, man, tell me that in the comments, man. Thank you. Stay sober.